the solar system is literally swarming with comets and asteroids of various sizes and trajectories. We discover more and more of them every night, dozens or even hundreds of them. For astronomers, this has long been a boring routine. But October 19, 2017 was anything but boring. That night deprived astronomers around the world of normal sleep and the rest of their nerves for a long time. It made them drop everything and deploy all telescopes. Even the orbiting observatories, Spitzer and the legendary Hubble were instructed to urgently turn around and look at one point, to the point where something was flying that would later be called Oumuamua. It means messenger from afar or scout in Hawaiian. Why? In this video, we will tell you about one of the most mysterious space objects in history. Perhaps we've never been closer to solving Fermi's paradox and solving the mystery of whether we're alone in the universe. Oumuamua. Solution to the Fermi paradox? However, it is worth starting with the fact that at first, nothing particularly unusual was found in it, and it was discovered not even by humans, but by robots. The fact is that most of the routine work in human space observation has long been done by automated systems. There are several such robotic telescopes operating on Earth now, and they are the first to detect something fast-moving. If something is moving fast, it means it's not some distant star, but an object somewhere here, flickering right beside us. Usually, those are either asteroids or comets. This work is ongoing, and detections occur almost every night. To date, more than a million asteroids in our system have already been detected. Divide that by 20 to 30 years of active observations, and it turns out that we discover 100 to 150 new objects every night. It's been a regular thing for a long time. Now, another seemingly ordinary object has been found. It was discovered by the Pan-STARRS robotic telescope in Hawaii. It's a rather large device, two meters in diameter. And at first, this discovery wasn't of much interest just another flying thing in the night sky. At first sight, it looked like a comet. The orbit is elongated, almost parabolic. But then the previous observations were brought up. Usually, this is how it happens. We see something, then we open the archives of yesterday and the day before and see something faintly visible in the same place or next to it. And then it is clear that this is the same object, and we just overlooked it, didn't notice it last night. So, having collected measurements for several consecutive nights, and having looked at what has turned out, everybody was astonished. And its orbit is hyperbolic. In other words, it will just fly close to the sun, and the sun will only be able to change its trajectory slightly not capture it so that it becomes a satellite, since this something is flying at a very high speed. Nothing in our solar system flies at that speed. Usually, objects do not fly at such high speeds and either fall directly onto the sun or become its eternal satellites. It became obvious that we were dealing with something extremely unusual. What's so unusual about it? Well, everything, almost everything. But first things first. This was the first time in the history of science that an object had been discovered flying into the solar system from unknown origins. This fact alone makes it not just unusual, but sensational. Until now, everything that was found, all these million plus bodies were our native, these asteroids, comets, and satellites have all been around for billions of years. 
And then suddenly, one flew in from somewhere outside. Basically, that's to be expected. After all, other stars also have their own planets, their own comets, and probably their own analogs of the Kuiper Belt and the Oort Cloud. They may well be losing something, just as we are. This is all true, but that's often the case with many discoveries. We could have expected it, but we didn't, and it came. At first, it wasn't clear what it was like, but gradually, we found out. And how did we find it out? Everyone was watching it. All large telescopes, even Hubble and Spitzer, were turned in its direction. Well, naturally, the first, interstellar, from afar, an indisputable sensation. A new category of celestial objects even had to be created. They started with the letter I, interstellar, shape. So we started tracking it. It turned out to vary in brightness, brighter, then dimmer, and it keeps repeating. We found out that the object was spinning, but still the brightness was changing too much. Pretty soon, it became clear that this was because of its shape. It's almost cigar-shaped, about 35 meters wide and up to 200 meters long. That's where we clutched our heads once again. There is no such asteroid among a million discovered asteroids in the solar system. Not a single one. Many people's first reaction was, OMG, what if it's an alien spaceship? Well, if aliens, then where from? Even if it's just an asteroid, still, where from? The trajectory was easy to trace, which was immediately done. All the data indicated that the space guest arrived from the constellation Lyra, and there was much evidence pointing to the star Vega, which, by the way, has a planetary system. But it is extremely doubtful that the object was lost exactly by the Vega system. If it travels, as assumed, for hundreds of millions of years, then Vega was in another part of the stellar sky. It should also be added here that the object was discovered rather late. That's because it was flying almost from the side of the sun. We still cannot detect such objects in the sun's side for quite understandable reasons. Any telescopes get blind. By the way, this is one of the rather acute problems in early detection of dangerous asteroids. That is why we noticed the Shelobinsk meteorite on February 15, 2013, only when the shockwave was already at full strength, blowing out the windows in city high-rises. It also flew from the sun's side. So Oumuamua was discovered when it had already flown very close to the sun, inside the orbit of Mercury. This was already an anomaly, because this zone is completely empty, and none of our comets and asteroids fly there. And this one was literally flying almost straight towards the sun, and circled it at a speed of about 90 kilometers per second. We should remind you that we have never seen such speeds in the solar system in our lifetime. And so, after circling the sun, it headed towards Earth, and we still didn't see it. The robot telescope detected the object only when it had already passed Earth and was beyond the orbit of the planet. And it could have crashed without warning, like the Shelyabinsk meteorite. But this time, we were lucky. When the unusual long shape of the object was identified, even many skeptics, who had never believed in the existence of other intelligent civilizations, trembled. We decided that since it might be an alien ship, why don't we send it a radio signal? And we did send it. Unfortunately, or fortunately, we didn't get an answer. Then, after all, we decided to consider it as an object of natural origin, at least within the framework of scientific impartiality. But this impartiality was greatly shaken again in the course of further analysis of the data. Oumuamua managed to sweep inside Mercury's orbit, 
perform a gravitational maneuver under the sun's gravity, turn and accelerate, heading out of the solar system. Okay, again, what does accelerate mean? And that's just another mystery that added a significant portion of probability to the fact that this is something artificial after all. And it's even capable of speeding up like this. It looks quite logical. A ship flies, runs out of fuel, flies into the first star system it can find, flies close to the star so as not to melt and to charge up as much as possible, then gives gas and flies away. And that's exactly what it looked like. Many had to exercise wonders of restraint again so as not to be under any illusions about aliens. After all, engines can also be of natural origin. We see this all the time. Real jet propulsion is demonstrated by comets approaching the sun. But in this case, it was not so simple, which we are going to discuss below. Oumuamua flew away as quickly and swiftly as it had come into our solar system. We did not manage to explore it close by spacecraft, although there was such an idea. There was even an announcement of a feasibility study for a Starship probe mission to Oumuamua. It was developed by the Initiative for Interstellary Studies. The document was called Project Lyra. But after careful evaluation and comparing the possibilities with the risks, it was decided to abandon the idea. Maybe it was for the best. What if it really was an alien ship and the crew there would consider our probes as a threat? Anyway, the Amuamua flew away and left a lot of questions and mysteries in its wake. There's something about this whole story that is mind-boggling. We mentioned earlier that the anomalous non-gravitational acceleration of the object after its approach to the sun could be caused by the same thrust effect which occurs in comets. One side is actively evaporating, creating a conditional pushing force. But there is a little detail here that ruins the whole idea. We did not notice any cometary activity in Oumuamua. As you remember, it was identified as a comet only at the first detection, and then reclassified as an asteroid just because of the lack of signs of cometary activity. Neither spectral gas lines nor dust was detected. How did it accelerate then? In the video, we talked a lot about the trajectory of the object already when it flew through our system but its galactic trajectory looks not less, even much more interesting. The object appeared in the sky from the direction of the so-called solar apex. This is the direction in which the solar system in the galaxy moves in relation to the surrounding stars. It is located in the constellation Hercules, close to the constellation Lyra. This direction of Oumuamua's emergence suggests that it is more likely that it was not that it came to our system, but that the solar system came to it. Literally like a car on the road that hit a pebble, throwing it by the wheel on the roadside. And from this, we can assume that in relation to the solar system, the object was not quite stationary, but obviously lived its own life. How and why? Finally, no one neglected the fact that we have not ever seen such a shape among all previously observed asteroids and comets. And there are, let us remind you, more than a million of them. It was exactly cigar-shaped. Such a shape could still be explained by tidal pull, when the boulder was still forming in its native stellar system. But there is no less convincing data that the object has the shape of a flattened pancake. And no one has been able to explain this yet. There is an opinion that in order to solve the Fermi paradox, it is not necessary to find real aliens or a guaranteed proof of their existence. It would be enough to find something that we can't explain by natural origins. Oumuamua is 
probably the first contender to be this something. And here we return to where we started. Maybe we have never been so close to solving the mystery of whether we are alone in the universe. This time, the key has slipped away. But even the mere fact of such an encounter is a source of hope.